Hello, this is Krillian, and welcome to episode 11 of my Let's Play Mass Effect. Uh, last time we started going around talking to people. Commander, nice work out there. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Hmm, he knew ahead of time. He's like prescient. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. Hmm. I go, it can't be that bad. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. Uh, I'll go with, uh... Is that really a reason? So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. c handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. It would be a tough decision. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside c -Sec. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. Hmm, that... I'm gonna go with that depends greatly on what it is. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to... I understand, Commander. I can see he might be kind of upset about how I said, but we should make sure he's not gonna go... Hey, Commander. Kill Rattle. Looking for some extra supplies before you... What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. I have to pay for stuff that's in my own ship? Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. I don't need to know about that. It's a store. He gets new items and I have to buy the licenses, but I've been doing it all Let's along. see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Okay. I'd really like that, but if you don't notice, I am 220,000 away, so... Um... That is better in every way. I think I like the Scorpion for better. And it's a light armor. Uh, what about this one? Hurricane. A little bit better. This one is even more awesome. I don't think I can wear heavy armor. I'm not sure I can wear medium armor yet, to be honest. Let's sell some stuff first. Anything that's level 1, we're just going to get rid of. Um, chemical rounds. I'm unlikely to do that. Combat sensors. Whatever, I don't like Cyro. Fusion explosion. Eh, nah. Hardened weave. We'll keep that for now. High explosive 2 is worth keeping. We'll keep the improved sighting. Incendiary explosives. 19 damage a second for 5 seconds. I'm sure whatever. We'll only keep one though because you only ever need to keep one. Uh, recoil dampener. I don't care about phasic rounds. Uh, shield battery. I don't care. So, I'll never use any of the stimulant packs. Don't care about toxic seals. Get rid of the guns we'll never use. Um, these can be useful, but I don't know if I like. I uh, will keep them for now. We'll keep the number three. What does this one do? Don't care. Don't want to use that. I will keep that for now. Get rid of that. What is it, Kessler? 
There's a not very good uh, for that. Sniper three, not good. I use a hurricane. Okay. Let me uh, look at my character. Yeah, I'm way far away from medium armor. I have to get to here and go all the way through here. Now uh, these two have some good stuff, but it's a ways. I do have all my psychic stuff. Uh, Master Unity would be really good. Don't care about Intimidate. I don't know if I put a point in there on accident. Okay, well we're done talking to you. Let's go to Engineering. Okay, here we have Tali. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Oh, uh, we're gonna go with our ship. My ship's nifty keen. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. You're into ships, seems... I had no idea you found weird. ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. That's a long time ago. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Let's find out about the course. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. Like what? What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. So it takes like 2.54 births to, uh, per couple to keep up population. So it's interesting that one birth would not always require you to inquire more. Unless you're not really losing any population, somehow. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So you're democratic. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. 
In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives, but in theory we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty, and they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. So, the problem with this, it sounds really great, you know, sacrifice your power to, to overrule something that would be bad. But in, in an emergency, for your entire military structure to basically resign, or the top of your military structure to resign, seems like a bad choice. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Well, tell me that. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. That's apparently illegal. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. Why would you make a neural network? So, the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. Hive mind. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. So why did they turn on you? What made them rebel? As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Since AIs are scary, we'll go with what happened next. What did you do? It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Yeah, so you decided to kill them and they defended themselves. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Vale. Now we drift through space, exile searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. I want to know more about the Geth. Uh, I doubt I, I can tell you thing. any... All I know is the story of their origins. Let's change the topic. What they were when we created them, 
and how they turned on us. I want to talk about something else. Like what? So, we're gonna go to the pilgrimage. Eh, I'm sorry talking about that. So, we're gonna say goodbye. I should go. See you later. Got a lot of experience with talking to her. We may have gotten more for the pilgrimage, but she's literally already told me hey, about Hey, Commander, it. you know that quarry in Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. Is that a bad thing? I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. She is quite useful. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Uh, tell me about these stealth systems. Fill me in on the IES stealth systems. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. Uh, I don't think we're invisible because obviously, but we'll ask anyways. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why would FTL give us away? Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. Uh, tell me about yourself. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's that? What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. That's a lot of experience we got for that. Totally worth it. Okay. Now, at this point, we've had our little talks. You have to come around periodically to talk to people. Kind of bad that my talk with Garrus wasn't nicer, but... Garrus gets kind of uppity. I do not want to take for some reason. Sadly, we do not get news, but we can give a good look at me. And then we'll go running back upstairs. Now, there's one more guest planet. I'm not sure we'll finish it in this episode, because we did spend quite a bit of time talking to people. But it was still really worth it. We've moved quite a bit towards our next level. I don't know if Joker has more to say. Okay. I think we did rain, Gary. Yeah, we, we did all gagging. We need to go to Grissom. So. I think I did all of Gagrin. Oh well. Okay, let's go check out the asteroids. Seems good there, then I'll come around here. Doesn't really matter if I don't get it, anything that happens to be in these asteroids, but if we can, we should quickly go ahead and do it. Um, an asteroid composed of mixed metals and silicates will survey it and find polonium. Excellent. And then we'll zip around just to make sure that's it. And then we'll come over here and look at Binda. In Binda, we can survey. And we uncovered an ancient Solarian vessel. A small team was dispatched, and they came back with a League of One medallion. Probably League of Ones are Solarians. At Zahiru. 
We can survey it. Uh, we scan it and find a deposit of beryllium on a small moon nearby. Is there any other planets over here? Nope. Okay, so there are two planets, or a planet and a moon. Here we have the planet, and there's nothing on the planet. So we'll go to the moon of Sulcrum. It is a level 1 heat hazard. So if we get out of our ship, uh, we'll start to take uh, have a countdown to take damage. Well, let's land and deal with this. So, who do I want to bring? I'm going to bring... Huh. Tali and Rex, I think. Good combat, good tech. Except our squad. We need a few more ranks before I can bring Garrus or Caden. There's a... Okay. So, let's take a look at our map. We have something here, here, and then here. Anomaly. That doesn't tell me what it is in debris. I'm going to go this way because I think this m with the exclamation park is the mission. And so we want to do that last. That way we can, if we're, we don't necessarily have to do it in this video. We end in the next one if we don't you know, immediately tape. We'll be ready to go anyways. Okay, we're going to come up over here because it looks easier to get back up. Hopefully I can come around the side. So that we can get up to where we need to be. Okay. Cover me. So we'll recover the artifact. Excellent. Uh, there are several artifacts stored here, all worthless except for Matriarch Dillonega's writings. Whether it is uncovered at this dig site or elsewhere is unclear. Well, we got more for writings. Wow, that's a lot of money for her writings. Um, we'll swing down to this debris. I think we did pick correctly. I didn't remember for sure which one was the site, the anomaly, or the, uh, um, the unknown thing. But usually that exclamation mark seems to be mission-based in a lot of maps. So that's what I assumed was going to happen. Now, of course, we could go to this debris and find it to be the gap, so... Probably should not toot my own horn quite yet. And sometimes there are gaps in more than one place. But since we're not getting blocked on our scanner yet, that is probably not going to be the case. Okay. We have found our debris. Adding out. Okay, so you'll see that level one hazard display at the bottom right. Um, excellent. Things I don't care about. I'd really like a healing thing, and we have still not found one. It's kind of depressing. Okay, let's go see if we can figure out what's going on way up yonder. Okay, it looks like we're going to have to go through some unpleasant mountains to get there. But we'll try as best we can. We'll hang a left here. So far we've actually got around remarkably easily should be careful so I do not jinx myself. Um. Over here we have a place, something we're going to go try and get. If we can get to it. Okay, that kind of worked. 
because again, there's no real reason not to collect these, and even if you're not going to collect all of them, uh, it still gives you experience and monies. And if I somehow didn't get all of them, which I don't believe I could possibly do at this point, it would uh, provide some excellent bonuses. Okay. This one was a little bit less pleasant to get to than I had hoped. But we are almost there. Excellent, we are there. Let's not be on top of it. Good morning. Okay. Survey this. Excellent, we have found magnesium. And let's get back in our car before we burn up. Okay. Still have a ways to go to get to where we need to be. Hopefully, it's fairly straight shot up what amounts to this ravine. Um, that would make life a lot easier. And I am all about making my life as easy as possible, if I can. Okay, we see uh, from here we're going to have some uh, turrets. Oh, walkers, not turrets. Oh, that was bad. I was too far up on that ridge. I actually got killed by a walker. Maybe I should have taken out the walkers first. Well, that was a sad moment. We got a little greedy there, and it bit us. And on that sad moment, when this finishes loading, I think that we're going to probably uh, end the video a minute or two early. We'll see where we are. I don't think I saved when I hopped out. Oh, wow, we are a ways away from our stuff. We got it again. <gasps> totally worth dying. I have my first aid interface. Save that again. Okay. Um. I know that somewhere around here, we're going to see um, rocks. So we're gonna head that way. We're gonna get back I think to where the geth are and then we'll end the video there and we'll see if I can not die to a giant cannon thought I, w I thought about backing up but I just didn't do it okay come on get up there turn right turn right don't fall okay good I seem to have remembered where the thing is pretty well, which is convenient. We will grab this and then we'll go get near the gap and call it. I wonder why the scanners weren't blocked. With the walkers there, I thought my scanners should be blocked. I am not sad they're not. Obviously, they're just that's an annoying thing when it happens. But interesting that it did not. 
save again just because. Enemy contact. Enemy contact. Yeah, let's survey this. Clear. Do 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 do. We have found our magnesium again. Save this in case something terrible happens again, and we'll get back into here before we die. Okay. Pop this back up here, and we will try to get back there. Bouncing crazily through the mountains. Okay, I'm gonna right. We are moving and grooving. Hmm. Okay, we are almost back there. And from here, we're going to go ahead and save. I may go in and shoot them with my cannons. Uh, but for now, we've gone over our hour, so we're going to end, the, or half an hour, so we're going to end our video. Uh, like and subscribe, leave, leave any comments below. Sorry about my terrible death, but I have my interface, which is healing interface, which is so good and important. So, uh, if you have any comments, let me know. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Adios.